Taylor, and you are listening to the Surviving Maine podcast. And with me, as always, is my co-host, George, uh, the producer of Survivor Brooklyn South and Surviving Maine Season 4. George, how are you? I'm doing great. Great to be back. Let's talk some surviving Maine. Yes, yeah, so you're looking great too. And uh, <laughs> back by popular demand, and definitely not because Matt canceled at the last second. It's Andy. <laughs> Hi, Andy. How are you? I'm doing so good. Doing so good. My my hand gestures were inspired by Topher. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> true. Tr- yeah. Steepling. Yeah. The. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not ready. I'm so ready. Topher serves <laughs> Topher serves those confessionals and the hands r- really sell it when he's being sneaky. Yeah, that was I mean, that was my first note that I took was uh Topher's hands. <laughs> because that's exactly it says Topher literal villain hands. Yeah. <laughs> that's my note. Yeah, he's yeah. entertaining. He's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, this is a I, I so I read this whole book on um body language it's called uh, what everybody is telling me it was by this like uh, fbi investigator guy um some of it's really interesting but well it, he kind of goes through some uh hand stuff and so this is like called steepling you know this is the church of the steeple and this is like a uh power right like this is when you feel power people do this when they feel powerful um so villains you know, a lot of times do it but like yeah in that moment i like it was like brought back because it was like oh yeah in this moment Topher is saying how the plan went as planned. Like he's saying, oh, the, the plan happened. And he's like doing a powerful pose. It was, yeah. Oh my gosh. Wait, Andy. Now, if you do it, does that give you power? Like, does it work in both ways? Are you like, you're feeling powerful, so you do it. But and if you do it, then does it, like, if I do it right now, will I be more confident on this podcast? I think it could, Try. it could work both ways. Try. Um, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it can bring confidence, but it, this book was more geared towards um, what language. you can watch in. So he's like a, he was like an interrogator, and uh, was like what you can watch for in people. Um, he really dispelled the idea that you can tell when someone is lying. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like you know you can, you can't do that, but you can tell when someone. If you set a baseline for someone, you can tell when they deviate from that baseline of behavior. Yes, yes. Uh, the steeple hands are not working. It makes me feel really weird, honestly. Sure. Yeah, because yeah. I, don't, I don't need weird. power. I don't need power right now. <laughs> this is a three-way thing. <laughs> I got to tell you, I feel pretty incredible. <laughs> it's working for George. Hey, that's that's all about it. Well, one, okay, this is, I know we're already off on a tangent. We're already, yeah. but uh, my favorite thing really is, I think it's really interesting to watch in human, like just behavior is uh, feet is like, I think the thing that I, I noticed the most. So like, if you are talking, standing and talking with someone, right? And they, the first thing that will disengage if someone doesn't, want to be in the conversation anymore is their feet so their feet will turn away their feet will kind of not point towards towards you anymore their feet will disengage and you that's like it's crazy how like that was the one that like i found the most accurate so fun thing to watch for um that yeah. is pretty accurate that i know i do that to shoes with the co-workers <laughs> you do that with co-workers <laughs> Like I realized that when when there's a coworker who talks to me that I don't want to talk to, I actually turn away and we'll I'll keep them engaged. It's so true, right? <laughs> but my feet will be saying otherwise. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Whoa. So, all right. So in this episode, we had it starts off with Topher's uh, villain hands, and then we we have Amelia, who basically calls out her tribe for for like not engaging her and making eye contact mm-hmm. right after do you think that was a smart move for amelia or was should she have just sort of played it nonchalantly like oh it's okay guys but then did her own little bidding her own little planning behind the scenes was it smart to call them out that's a good question i good I, question. I i didn't question it at first but so i think so uh Another book, another. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the it's the forty laws of power. Um, so it's better to have people who have wronged you than it is to do people favors, is what they what they say. Right, because a person who 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 has wronged you is more likely to want to do things to get back on your good side. So now, Nick especially, Topher not as much because Topher knows that he didn't 
backstab her. He wanted her to play her idol. He knew that that was going to be kind of, but Nick, especially there might be an underlying feel a need to feel like he owes her one. Um, people feel like that, that's like, you know, if, if that's true or not, but that's a, you know, a theory is that when, when someone wrongs you, that they're actually then feel, will feel more indebted to you um, sometimes. And I think in this case, that, that might be the case. I agree. I think, I think that's true of Nick. Um, yeah, I ju ju not to be results oriented, but I don't think it was a bad idea for her to say that because she's she had just come off of saying like, I'm definitely not playing my idol, I'm going to save it for a swap and use it on one of you like, she had been saying stuff like that to them. So for her to kind of it was like her way of like, uh, apologizing or justifying playing the idol, even though she has no reason to do that they all wrote her name down <laughs> she's being she's like being understanding and letting them know she was onto them but in a very uh, the way that she comes across is just so sweet yeah yeah it's like, saccharine <laughs> like she's not capable of any wrongdoing at all but right. she's planning she's plotting and planning over there and I do want to say, like, because we I was here for, you know, for the last last episode, and I feel like we gave Callie a lot of props. We didn't really give Amelia enough props, I think. Mm. I think I was thinking about that this time, and I was like, you know what? Amelia played an idol that canceled every vote except for hers. Yes. We talked about, like, the power of that position, but we didn't really talk about, you know, even though Callie suggested she play that idol, um, she did it. She didn't, you know, and it was correct. And I think that there, I think we don't want to give her more props Sorry, Amelia. I, I didn't give you enough props last time. You, you. That was that was a great play. I think Callie setting it up was also was a, maybe a superior, you know, strategy play. Like the fall in that. Now we're seeing the fallout from that. Amelia is a hundred percent lockstep with Callie. Mm -hmm. Topher is a hundred percent lockstep with Callie. So Callie is in the complete dominant position in this tribe. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't really know where kind of Nick falls with the Callie Topher, but not he's he's not with Amelia. So so I think Callie's still like amazing move but i feel like yeah got to give amelia some credit for for you know really not only having someone say you should play it but also feeling like they wouldn't look at her yeah i think she she did she did great there yes any um, successful auto play is really good for the resume right moving forward yeah. i've heard it's fun yeah, i don't know <laughs> andy wouldn't know <laughs> <laughs> uh my next set of notes not it's not a set it's a Maybe it is a set as Allison's trumpet noise. Yeah. <laughs> are you, yeah, my Allison. question was, are you, the doi 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 doi? Are you going to use that and as a sound effect later in the season? Like, is that going to be like the the dummy edit for someone when they're doing something silly? Andy, I want you to be my official consultant because that's a great idea. <laughs> I think anyone who puts themselves out there like that. And, and is not afraid to stand out and look like a fool in front of strangers in a game where they can judge you and vote you out, mm -hmm. go either way. And Allison just happens to be one of these people that can be out front and center and people still want to keep her around. She's not, she's not like annoying out front and center. She's, she's entertaining. She's fun. And she's just not afraid to put it out there. So I give her a lot of credit for that. Whenever she plays these games, she's balls to the wall. She just goes mm -hmm. goes for it. And it's very, she she has the self-awareness that she knows exactly what she's doing and she's using it as part of her strategy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what do you know? Everyone's saying, you're my number one to her. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's what she's she setting herself up really nice. Really mm -hmm. nicely, she's setting herself up. And, yeah, and we see how that plays out in this episode, right? So that that yes. that comes full circle. So you know, here we see her put that strategy into effect, and by the end of the episode, we see that it paid dividends. So, right. She, now, this is a little aside from Survivor, but she she just posted something, and she's she can sing. I don't know if you, any of you have seen oh, any yeah. of her clips singing. She has a voice on her. This girl, <laughs> she is musical theater royalty, in, in probably her hometown, I would assume. But she's really good. She's really good. Yeah, and she and I, you know, I think George and I are definitely both Allison fans. She she came and uh, came to my house and played in uh, the okay. the game that that we hosted. So mm -hmm. uh, love Allison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she was a standout there. She she had the best time. Yeah, you know, just having fun. And it's clear that she's having a great time in Maine as well. Yeah, and I think I think she's currently on the season airing of Survival Challenge. 
Oh, that's right. Wait, is that right? I think she's on. I think I'm she's bad with that stuff. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I, I think I saw her. I think I saw her. On, I, don't quote me. Never quote yeah. me. <laughs> but also in Flagstaff, Another really funny standout moment for me, anyway, was TJ side eye when they're talking about poker. Yes, and like oh, he yeah. kind of gives like, I, and I I have a question for both of you: is it is it is it more Jim Halpert or more Michael Scott the side eye? Which 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 would you say? Are you office fans, hopefully. That is a Michael Scott that? look to the camera, one hundred percent. That was Michael Scott. <laughs> See, I wrote, I wrote down in my notes that says Jim look. Um, you did you, you wrote Jim I wrote That's Jim fair. or Michael we are so in tune Andy my god and I, and I think that the reason I, I went Jim is because like in that moment I think that well yeah actually I don't know now I'm thinking about it but in that moment he you know Jim is the, the conduit for the audience so they say like when someone does something silly it's funny but when you get to watch someone do something silly that's funnier so in that moment TJ is the, like the conduit to the audience of like, you know, Mary's like, oh, I like to play poker, but then like kind of fumbling through what even the rules and how poker works. And so, you know, for the for the poker people, TJ is the person being like, mm. especially because if he comes to, you know, I'm a professional poker player. Nobody knows that. But yeah. And even his awareness to, to, to like yeah. that it's a documentary, right? You know, to look at the camera. That was <laughs> outside of that survivor situation. If someone would have Approach that subject in front of TJ, he probably would have been all over it and would have been the life of the party oh, in yeah. that moment. But he had to he had to keep his mouth shut because he had to hold his cards close. Good for him. I mean, I don't know if I could yeah. like there are certain no. things that like yeah, I'm just like, okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> like when people bring up Survivor. Like when someone who I don't know brings up like a stranger brings up Survivor, they're my new best friend for the next like <laughs> hour and a half i don't stop right. talking to them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I talk to, even people who don't like survivor i try i just try and get them hooked <laughs> i'm like just just watch it please just do yourself a favor you don't understand what it is if you if you don't like it you don't understand it that's that's exactly. the, the poo pooers the poo pooers i do that too people are like ah you know that that's still on that yeah. sort of thing those are the people i try to convert <laughs> we are we are a cult let's face it yeah. it's it might be true yeah it's bad it's bad <laughs> So what about Mary's caveat? Oh my God. <laughs> well, I feel like, do we want to go in like chronological order of the episode? Or are we like... Whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, let's, let's go straight to Mary's caveat. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Did we skip over a bunch of stuff? There was a couple things I thought were... Because um... that's my next note and I went sequential. So if you have things between there, go for it. Well, so I thought one interesting thing um, was... Uh... Sandra talk is it it's Sandra, right? Is it Sandra? Sandra. 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 I'm so sorry, Sandra. Um <laughs> well, but her telling uh she the, the fact that she knows Allison and then um she told Zach that she, you know, she knew Allison. And so there was that, but it was more of a kind of a question. The allergy is like community is like, you know, it's a it's a big and small world, right? Like there's there's a lot of little pockets, but there's a, a fair amount of overlap. What do you guys think about the strategy of telling people that you've played allergies? Um, Cause that came up again on the, the sit out bench, TJ kind of is, <laughs> um, talked more about it, but how do you, you know, what, what's the best strategy uh, for playing that? How do you, how do you, how do you do it? Cause, cause you, I feel like there's a risk, right? You're either going to be, someone's going to know something that you did that you're lying about and then they're going to think you're a liar or people are going to be think you're too threatening because they, you know, some of these people probably aren't that as experienced as you. And so that scares them too. So there's, it's a, it's a tough spot. Yeah. I think well, there's, there's no yeah. reason to lie about if you're, if your LRG has been on YouTube, you can't lie. It's, it's stupid to try to lie about it. Cause some people are going to know, like some people are going to do their research and watch a bunch of other LRGs before they play even first time players, if they're smart, are going to do that so yeah. yeah so to lie about it just doesn't make sense now if you've played 10 uh maybe not say that or maybe if you have you and you're like i've never made the jury that's well, someone me... you want to know that or you could even lie because no one really is going to remember that much if even if they watch an lrg like they're not gonna be like oh yeah you came in fifth like you know it, it's not something to lie about as yeah. as a um 
seasoned player. Um, do you think it's better to get rid of the novice players or drag them to the end? Because if they're a novice, there's sometimes a wild card. They'll do silly things that you you aren't anticipating, but they can also be somebody that you can take to the end as someone who you could easily beat because they were just doing what you said. What do you is it does, is it a situational thing or is there what, what would your approach to that be? I think it's I think it's got to be individual and situational. Like it depends on the novice, depends on the seasoned player, um, what kind of game they play, what kind of situation you're in, and how their game will line up with your individual game. Right? There's like the right answer for me is going to be different for the right answer for every other single player. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, I think that 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 yeah, that's yeah, and and it depends on where you are in the game um, and the the bonds you've created with them. I mean, I think that you know taking a novice to the end can be dangerous in a way that they get newbie points, right? They get, yeah. oh, this person has never played and they made it to the end. That's a, that's an impressive thing to exactly. be able to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think you have to be be careful of that too. Um, yeah, yeah, I was the, just curious of that. Um, the my, my first LRG, you know, I was scrambling to get people to play and I asked my friend who was just a casual Survivor fan to play and she did and she's still in therapy. But Alex <laughs> wound up taking her all the way to the end. Alex Forrest and Hausler was just, just sniffed her out from a mile away and was like, just just do what I tell you to do. And like they at the, they wound up cutting her loose at four. But, uh, I, you know, there's a huge difference between a novice player and uh, someone who doesn't know much about the gameplay. Right. Like when I played my first LRG and my only LRG I was a novice player, but like, I'm a psychopath, right? Like I have watched tons of LRGs. I've watched every season of Survivor multiple times, Big Brother. So I got to the end as the only person who uh, had never played before in a final three against two people who had played before. And that was one of my arguments. And that's how, it's not how I won. I won because I was uh, amazing, obviously, but... (laughs) so it really depends on the on the player if it's a novice who who is like you know uh a wild card i want that person gone if it's a novice who's really smart i want to drag that person for a while and then cut them because they could beat me and and if and you know that every every person's different mary mary in this season (laughs) is a wild card you gotta get somebody (laughs) what you, you gotta, gotta get, get rid, rid of, of Mary her. because she's like telling people who who's going. She's you know, very, I just she is fun to watch. That is she and she is living her authentic self in those moments. There is no pretense at all. That lady, she is the real deal. I have a question can, for you guys. Did did you did you uh, remember or did you forget? When they're having their strategy talk right before tra- tribal council and Mary's talking about like, I'm going to vote you out. Oh no, I'm going to, let's vote out Shaylee. Did you forget that she didn't have a vote? Or did you know that the whole time you were watching? Because when Becky was watching, she completely forgot until tribal council when Mary says she doesn't have a vote. And Becky was like, wait, what? What was all that chaos? She doesn't have a vote and everyone knows already. It's like Mary I'm forgot. Too. I kind of forgot, but I I like when I was, when I was, now that you're saying it, I'm like, uh, but I, yeah, I think maybe thrown in, but like, I think that adds to the fun of the chaos. Oh, absolutely. Like, even if it's just a Chiron, that's like Mary, no vote. And then like back to Mary of like, I'm going to vote you out. Because (laughs) the fact that Mary told three different people that she was writing their name down without the ability to write anyone's name down. Yes. So great. (laughs) It's hilarious. That's why we love surviving Maine. Yeah, and it was like yeah, it was it was both like too honest and like that she came up with code names for who they were gonna be, yeah, you know, like <laughs> Slim and Shorty, you know, like that they they needed code names so that she could indicate to who like, yeah, it, I mean, love Mary, like Mary was such you know such a great person, such a genuine person, like uh, awesome to have out there, and we'll see how you know how she does moving forward because she's. Uh, Yes. She's on Exile now. The big reveal. Now everyone knows about Exile, episode three. <laughs> Will that, uh, so we, I think like we'd brainstorm titles of, for the season. Is that title going to be, is that title going to be used moving forward after this or no? 
Liza didn't want to do that. So okay. we're not doing cool. that. Fair <laughs> yeah. enough. No, Same yeah, logo. Yeah. I tried. Uh, I tried. I wanted it to mean be. for the title, the title of the season, you mean? Yeah, the title yeah. of the season at one point we were talking about like surviving surviving Maine, welcome to exile. Yeah, or like gotcha. yeah, welcome to exile or like edge of the woods or something like that. But no, no, I I like I like the Pierce. That's that's the that's the probes way right now. So <laughs> probes. Wait, 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 where's probes? Is he here with us? Oh, oh, you, oh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. What do you what do you think about should uh, should they do themes? Should we should be doing themes? No, we shouldn't do themes. No themes. <laughs> themes are terrible. Who who wants themes? What is themes this are out. accent? Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, you lost your hat, Jeff. What Thank is this you, accent, Andy? I don't understand this voice. I can't do I can't do a Jeff Probst. Um, Muppet mumble. It's you, Muppet mumble. What what does Jeff Probst even sound like? Can you do it? Can you do a Probst? What that? is love? Tell me about this feeling you're having. Not, not bad. Not Nailed bad. it. Okay. <laughs> not what bad. Is, oh, yeah, I can't do it. I can't do that voice. <laughs> I can do Elmo. <laughs> I can do good Elmo, but that's wonderful. now it's just weird. Now it's just weird. <laughs> no, keep hey, this is this is Jeff Probst doing an Elmo impression, okay? Oh my god! Okay, it's at this me. moment. It's at this moment that every person who was watching all six just turned their computers off. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, so all right, six. Right. And and any the one person listening to the podcast version has no idea <laughs> what's going on right now. There was a puppet. There was a puppet. It's fine. They'll, they'll get it. They'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> okay, can a we? Moment can that- yeah. No, George, go ahead. I was just gonna say a moment that made me laugh. It's just such a throwaway little moment that just cracked me up was when Madison was there. She, she said, Oh, there's my mom over there and my girlfriend over there. I don't know why, but the fact that they were both there and they were both like on opposite sides of the field, maybe <laughs> they were helping or something. They were they were videoing, and that's how I knew. Like I messaged her right away, like, can you please send me all the videos they took? And they end up being in the credits on one episode her mom and girlfriend oh, nice. <laughs> because they sent me some videos but i just thought it was cute i wanted to include it because i was like oh was her girlfriend this little high schoolers girlfriends out there i love it yeah they had there was a cheering section for yeah. madison it was very it was very cool and uh you know they stayed for a long time and they helped out and they were fun um and it, was, it was fun to have like a a cheering section even if it was for sort of just one person you could tell that they were there hoping that everything went smoothly for everything you know yeah they they were great there was a similar thing going on in um season two where jess the idol queen of of season two uh her mom was it just her mom oh it was her mom and her grandma and it was like me and mom and grandma hanging out that whole weekend (laughs) i was rooting so hard for jess like just as much as becky (laughs) and jazzy honestly and and our season mary ellen's family was came out yes yes yeah every every season gets one 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 (laughs) cast member gets a family there (laughs) so Um, i have have to get us back yeah. on track on the episode, um, so this is another sm- very small thing, but I was just—I found it, uh, it was a good, just good strategy question. So at l- one point, uh, Lauren puts out the idea of we should just decimate Moosehead. Yeah, we want to just decimate Moosehead so that we are both strong tribes moving forward. And I don't know if she was just doing that basically to say like she understands that the idea that if you're the tribe of six, the other two tribes are going to probably gang up on you mm-hmm. and doesn't want to say we should lose to vote someone out yeah so she's just saying that like maybe that's why she was just saying it um what do you think of that as a strategy i think she's right i think she's right and then you see tj later is it in this episode oh my gosh it might be a different episode well in this episode tj does say like i'm glad we're going because we don't okay we don't yeah yeah it's in this episode they don't want to be the big bad tribe like sebago yeah okay yeah, he said, yeah, he basically, yeah, says, I, I, we, I'm glad we're going to get rid of someone because, yeah, we don't want to be the, we can, we can join up with Moosehead now and go after mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. They have so much food. He's talking about how much food they have. They're like bragging. You know, they weren't bragging really, but it, he no. made it sound like they were bragging about how much yeah. like they hadn't. They did not cook all the rice on the first night. Yeah. <laughs> unlike, unlike some tribes. Hashtag will. Never forget. <laughs> Never forget. Never forget. Uh. Uh, can we talk about the shot in the dark? I was wondering if 
Liza told any of the crew members about the shot in the dark or explained it to the cast at all, other than just putting it in their bags? I think that they got like they got it in their bag and then they got like that paper, right? That paper yeah. that explained they got it. Yeah. Did um, you guys know about it? Yes. I knew about it because yeah. I was filming. Uh, I was filming the votes. So but I had to know about it. But did you know about it before? Because because season season three, no one knew about it until someone asked, "What is this thing in my bag?" And I, and the whole crew was like, "What is going on? What are these mm. things?" I think we, we were aware that they had shot in the darks. Yeah. Okay. From, At least you knew that. I, I don't I don't remember whether or not we were aware of all the intricate rules that went along with them this this season. Yeah. No, thank God there were that... a lot. Yeah, there thank God that of... Dave gave that confessional where he's going through it because, like, I would have had no way to convey that to the viewers, like, what this is other than, like, sh just showing, thank goodness <laughs> someone took a picture of it and yeah. sent it to me. Uh, so you thank you, Dave. Great confessional where we got to do the exposition of what the shot in the dark is and, and how they can be used and combined to do even cooler things. Yeah. I think it was at this point in the game where, um, people started crossing over into that tired making mistakes not knowing what's going on uh and even it was so early but it was still so mentally draining by that point mm -hmm. when you well, have we, we, yeah we get to mary's caveat so this is this was the spot of mary's mary's caveat which actually i have a theory on mm -hmm. i want i want to get uh your, your guys your guys take on this so um the way I read it, and I was that Mary was basically saying, "Hey, if you cross, if you betray me, or you do something that I don't feel comfortable with, then I'm not going to work with you anymore." Which is kind of an implied thing that's happening. But I think that people took it as Mary is closer with Aaron than she is with us. Yeah, they read a lot into that. It felt like. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, wow, this is something to note. Like yeah. people, you have to really be careful what you say. People well, will take I mean, things. Yeah. It really made them wonder what happened on that journey. Because right. all of a sudden she was very close with this guy who she was away from the group with for an extended period of time. And uh, yeah, I think that they, that freaked them out uh, for sure. That's why they read so deeply into it, I would say. One so of Mary's I, many mistakes. And, and then he's, and then she, and then he's voted out. Like, what a what a waste of a thing to say <laughs> before you even know who's voted out of that tribe. <laughs> well, I, I guess to me, it's I think is uh, and I, I'm is curious from an editing point because like, for me it was they were misunderstanding Mary, right? Like, Mary, that's mm -hmm. Mary, what Mary was wasn't saying was I'm closer with Aaron than you. Mary was basically saying like, and gave Aaron as an example person. Like, I might fight with someone like like Aaron. Mm -hmm. it wasn't even like I'm close with Aaron. It was if you do things that I don't feel comfortable with, then I could go with someone else. I, I like I don't want to promise that I'm always going to be with you guys because I think Mary was just being honest. Um, but I think that oh, people, definitely. yeah, like there's this, uh, one of my favorite quotes, I used to end emails like that with this, uh, is it's, it's like basically uh, the biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it happened, Oof. right? Like um, we think that what people, what we're saying to people is what they're, and what we mean by what we're saying is what they're going to take in. But a lot of is often very lost in that translation. I think that that was what was happening with, with Mary here. Um, and I was actually curious from your Andrew. perspective, Taylor, the editing. So you get all this footage. How often do you see, like, because to me, that would like almost like drive me a little bit crazy. Like, no, no, that's not what they said. Like, that's that's not what they, you know. Um, that, how yeah. often do you see these like misunderstandings pop up in the edit where you're like, oh, they, they missed that one. Or like, oh, that's not what that person said, but that's what they think they, they said. Like. Is that interesting? We had that or... discussion yesterday about someone, right? Uh, Taylor, wasn't it something that you, you were worried about the perception of a certain scene that came oh, across? Uh, that uh, Dee Dee was talking about um, Amelia and Callie in episode one. And I was afraid that viewers would be confused because of the language she was using. She was talking about them being the two people she wanted to work with going forward. But what she was saying, the way she was saying it, it kind of sounded like she wanted to vote them out first. But she was saying that they were, yeah. But anyway, you know, Andy, to answer that question, I, I wish it happened more. 
uh, mm. because it's it can be fun and can yeah. really uh, throw people off. And it's like drama. It's like sitcom, almost yeah. like uh, this miscommunication. But with this particular thing, I think off camera, uh, behind the scenes, surviving Maine, right? Yeah. <laughs> the off camera, Mary was saying a lot more about Aaron and like talking about him nonstop. That's mm. what it seemed like from the okay. other conversations I was looking at. Um, there's so just so much boring America, stuff. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I think the way she said it is more along the lines of what you're thinking. But uh, be- because she had been talking about him so much before, like, oh, he's such a great guy. I can't wait for you guys to meet him. Mm. Like, that's weird to say to your tribe, right? <laughs> like, And using the word caveat is always yeah. like, yeah. This, the, the, that's, this was a, a clear case of survivor. I think it don't say it. This was, mm-hmm. and because ev- that's what yeah. everyone's thinking, right? You betray me. Of course, I'm not going to work with you anymore. You like, um, you do something that I don't like, don't feel good about. You know, I'm probably not going to feel as good about working with you. But you know, you, you, everyone's telling the same lie that we're all we're in this together. We're we're a team forever. A, it's like the flashback to Redemption Island when. Uh... Rob got pissed off at Matt for like shaking the other team's hand. And that was like his, the <laughs> beginning of his demise. It's yes. like, then we have the challenge. Great challenge. Oh, don't finish. That was tough. That was Ooh. rough. Sandra yeah. pulled it out. Must have made you feel weird there, Andy. Stop. That one was fine. I, you know, I, I've learned from that mistake. I feel much better about it. I think my favorite moment of that challenge was the, uh, slide whistle when lauren rolls off the balance beam yeah thank you yes i laugh every <laughs> oh, time I watch yeah. it. i'm sorry i'm so sorry lauren i but i laugh every <laughs> time i watch it i'm like ah, <laughs> i did a slide whistle there yeah that was such a good slide whistle it's, it's just perfect. such a slow fall back <laughs> and she continues rolling over i'm so sorry lauren it's funny though i hope you can I mean, laugh at it and, and that You're comeback was again. that comeback was like was just nuts yeah, like i cool. In my head, I was trying to remember the weekend and I was like, wait, because I was, they were so far ahead. They like had the puzzle done. And then, yeah, I was like, in my head, I'm like, yeah, who goes? Like, I didn't remember the order. And then, and then yeah, so. That upside down S. What do you guys think about that pickiness on the puzzle? Tile swap puzzles are notorious for be you have to be very nitpicky because yeah. it's if there's a space there you know you just have to mm-hmm. be very nitpicky with those i use yeah. them in every single season and you really have to pay attention to those spaces on those tiles yeah it is pretty clear that it was specifically made in that specific way that you had to have the space yeah. before the i and the space after the s yep. uh yeah. So uh, intentional that's trickery, intentional right. trickery. Right. Yeah, that's the only reason that was hard because, like, some of the words are just so, like, yeah, it was so easy if you don't have that specific thing that you have to think, figure out. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, I would have failed it, but still, it was, it was easy. And how about <laughs> <laughs> you would have failed it? Mm-hmm. How about uh, the uh, weakened moose heads losing their strongest player but winning first place in that challenge? Well, I, th- I think that the the challenge before you go to immunity always plays into the factor of what you think strength is. Oh, so, so tug of war. Yeah, they're playing tug of war, and Aaron was like, you know, granted, didn't win it for him, but was probably their MVP of tug of war. He was, you know, mm-hmm. and so they're looking at that of like, we have to have strong people. They um, or Nick. I'm calling out Nick. 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 I'm just yeah, so- Nick. it was Nick. <laughs> <laughs> it was Nick. When you, yeah, the, well, the person the person who was saying who who was using tribe strength as their uh, you know uh, rubric for why why they should vote. I don't think Callie or Topher really was was using that rubric. If they had no. been using that rubric, I'm curious what they would have thought. But I think mm-hmm. they were looking more at numbers and uh, how they were going to get farther in the game. But Nick using that rubric said you know Aaron. But I think that you know it really is only whatever the last thing was some and, and that's when you're only only when you're looking at tribe strength at least that, um, that's my yeah that makes sense thoughts. andy i just it's so rare that you're gonna have a brute strength um challenge in an lrg it just it just really irks me when people talk about tribe strength and assume a man is just automatically gonna be stronger than a 
any woman period it, and it's just how it is and it and it's always gonna bother me as it a should, small it, woman right <laughs> like, it should yeah it, it, like yeah now if it was like yeah if yeah if if like someone had you know had some if there was some yeah like that 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 what well, you're exactly what you're saying is like a man is stronger so we'll be better at challenges is just silly right like yeah because the, could, the, could could Aaron have balanced on that balance beam the way Amelia did she blew doubtful. everyone out of the water right yeah. oh doubtful yeah yeah, yeah. No, not doubtful like almost you know not not even the best balancers on the six people tribe six person tribes could do what Amelia did so yeah. You know. And yeah, they, they, I think they were done in the puzzle before, like way before. Before they even were. Else, yeah. Yeah. Done balancing. with the balance beams. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, I mean, go, good for Callie too. Great with puzzles. There was a challenge that was cut out from episode one. Um, that was a big, a tough puzzle, I guess, that um, Callie just uh, solved it right away for her tribe. And I think that was the one reward challenge Moose had got first place on. Hmm. Um, so apparently she's great at puzzles too mary telling kaifer he was going was a highlight because what <laughs> what what did mary mean Redundant. that kaifer had redundant skill what was she going oh, so for good. there i don't what know what was what 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 What's redundant skill <laughs> to use as a reason to vote somebody out i don't <laughs> know mary it, I mean, this was like a ma unintentional masterclass in creating chaos, right? <laughs> right. Because she goes to so TJ was. and she's like, "It's between you and yeah. lovable, sweet, amazing, never will right. vote for him, Kiefer." <laughs> and so TJ's like, "Well, it's definitely me." And then she goes to Kiefer and she goes, "You're redundant. We don't need you." Um, and then, and then for no reason, was like, "I think we should also maybe Shaylee. Let's let's right. let's target." That was the first one. We're we're a tribe of six. I don't have a vote. I don't have a vote. Let's target three people. Shaylee's in my alliance. Let's vote her out. Let's, now, how about these two other guys? Let's vote like, them out as well. <laughs> let's let me piss off three people. That's the <laughs> amount of people that it would take to vote me out. You know, I like and oh god. You, know, I, I, you guys, I coached Mary on how to lie in her in her in her interview before the game. <laughs> If you you can watch it on YouTube, and she just could not fucking do it. She no. couldn't do it. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. She but was I think great. that what what we learn, you know, what we also learn here is that um, Dave and Allison have done a, a did a great job with Mary, mm -hmm. and that they've also done a great job with the rest of the group. Right, the rest of the group is kind of feeding them all this information. So, I mean, Dave's knowledge of the numbers here i feel like really like how the the strategy how the numbers work how vote, voting works like dave's game knowledge i think really um his like explaining of the game really shown through in this episode and dave search and tribal council like he was looking like he was a diabetic looking for insulin so was, fast. Yeah. yeah he's just and i had to now i'm filming this and i know dave and dave's a friend so I'm the old, <laughs> I just do this. This is what I do when Dave's <laughs> searching because I don't want to laugh in his face. I don't want to give anything away, but he literally leaves no stone unturned up there. Mm -hmm. It's we, we're, hilarious. The, the, the set for tribal uh, or for the, for the voting booth. So when we arrived on scene, I think it was actually kind of a fun story. So we arrive on scene and the voting booth had not been, was not ready yet. It was still, um the remnants of the hunt like the i, I think they use it as, what do they use it as a, hunt, uh, a like, hunting blind yeah yeah hunting blind so it's still the remnant so there's like shell casings like beers car like a deck of cards and everything and uh that's, oh that's so cool so that's why they, they were like cleared out and uh like me and george went up there and i was like we were like no we got to keep this yes we got it like <laughs> This is surviving Maine, and this is literally what this space was like. We're just gonna use, like, let's just use all this stuff. And so That's we so like awesome, you guys. So we took the poke, like we like yeah. Those shell casings were what like the, that like all that that set dressing was just the the hunting blind like turned like you know made to look a little bit uh, more I guess nice like more more like a a little bit like a set. Authentic. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was so authentic, um, <laughs> and yeah, I feel like. George, were you, I, I think I remember you were like, we had playing cards 
and we'd like put the the playing cards in like different orders and like you know like it'd be like a flush or like a straight yeah just... <laughs> really? we were driving them crazy yeah. they would come up what why th th there was no ace here before is the ace is the ace an idol is the ace an idol can i use this as an idol i'm using this as an idol i just go <laughs> it's nothing it's nothing leave it alone oh, just leave it <laughs> yeah i think we we're like we we're like hiding cards places just for fun like just <laughs> This I love yeah. this. This is what I wanted from this podcast was stories like this. <laughs> yeah, because like I yeah, I just, we we like walked in there and we're like, okay, we got a lot of work to do. And we're like, actually, no, we don't have so much work to do. We just got to move some stuff around. And like, you, this is it. This is like, this is this is surviving Maine. Like, yeah. <laughs> and if you sneeze too hard, the whole thing was gonna crumble. It was <laughs> terrifying. T absolutely terrifying yeah you just needed the, like three dogs up there with you in the in the hunting blind for when they came up to vote that would make it complete complete surviving <laughs> aid <laughs> and that was the other thing i remember us talking andy with liza um liza's gonna kill me if i forgot her dog's name liza was trying to keep their dog curb uh, on the side as if the dog was gonna ruin the shot but we would we talked to Liza and we were like, "Ah, hey, it's authentic. It's Maine. The dog's running around. The dog is part of this. The, you know, her nephew on the on the on the motorbike riding around. Also, it's part of the authenticity of what it is to be in that area. You know, in Maine. Ozzy. Ozzy, Ozzy thank you. God, I couldn't find it. <laughs> One of the best close. dogs, Ozzy. Yeah, okay. Ozzy. I did, Ozzy hated my hat. I wore a big. Lots of barks, hat. lots of barks at that raccoon hat. Oh, the raccoon hat, both hats. Maybe no. just Ozzy doesn't like me. <laughs> oh God, I don't think Ozzy likes you, Andy. Which is weird for me because, like, I'm very much like a usually a dog whisperer. Mm. Um, I watch a lot of that show. Really? <laughs> you know all the tricks. <laughs> My mom watches Rocky Mountain Vet, and she's convinced she could perform surgery on anything you put in front of her. <laughs> Any animal you put in front of her, she's like, "Oh, I know how to do this. I can, I can, pu I can pull this tumor out of this dog's ass. No problem." I just you know? find it on YouTube. You can do it easily. She is versed. She has she has a PhD in Rocky Mountain Vet on uh, <laughs> basic cable. Um, all right, so we're digressing. Uh, you or the lovely, sweet, lovely Kiefer we talked about, which was hilarious. TJ, TJ being yeah. like. Yeah, I, don't know. So I guess it's I guess me. It's me. <laughs> that was great. I love that from TJ. Yeah, Slim, Shorty, and then uh, Kiefer. <laughs> Kiefer, oh, Kiefer, yeah. not Kiefer. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> Kiefer, not Kiefer. Um, so Aaron uh, bowing out at the end of the episode. Well, so one thing before we get to the to the exile, I just want to ask: Was this so? Not so much was this the right move, but was this the wrong move for anyone? Because I think it was. It, Seems like the right move for most people. Is there anyone who was the wrong move for? I would say for Allison, getting Kiefer out would have been smarter because that's the only person she who hasn't told her <laughs> that she's his number one and hasn't uh, done strategizing with her at all where she's had talks with everyone else. But no. it's not a bad move for her either. No. Yeah, I think I think the the chaos that Mary presented maybe still made it the better move like even though you're not working with Kiefer you have everyone else mm -hmm. it's okay to have someone that you're not working with if you have a clear majority because that is someone to lose maybe mm -hmm. um but at the same time yeah I think that being aligned with everyone is also that gives you the most options that's and you that's what you want you want options but yeah I so yeah, think that maybe maybe a good call I, that was that was the kind of person I had in my mind of who who maybe it was not the optimal move, but yeah, I don't know. I agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because Mary could be a a good foil for any of them, really. Like, well, we didn't get this wild card out last time. How about next time? And then it's like always an option, but because yeah. she is such a wild card, I, you don't really want to mess with that. I think they all made the right decision. We and, and it's an, like the honest wild card, I think, is especially dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, Mary was, her conversation with Allison, Allison doesn't know where that's going to go, right? Like, if you have, like, someone who's a little bit of a wild card, but, you know, 
like Q in this most recent season was a wild card. Mm -hmm. Um, but you like I think Maria kind of knew who Q was going to tell stuff to. Yeah, like he was going to maybe do some wild stuff, but he was like, yeah. Versus Mary, you just didn't. Like, I don't think anyone knew what Mary was going to say to whom, when, and that. Yeah, I think that can just be you know dangerous. Yeah, um, but, but yeah, now to Aaron. To Aaron, what do you? What were your thoughts on Aaron leaving George? Um, my thoughts on Aaron leaving. I was, I was bummed. Yeah, I didn't want him to leave, but he he literally thought about it for four seconds, and then he was like, "I'm done. I'm not doing that." Like he was, I, he was just done. He was just done. I think he was he a smoker. I think he yes. wanted a cigarette. He wanted a cigarette. <laughs> that was a stipulation. If he like, he, I think he might have said, "If you let me smoke, I'll do exile or something." And we were like, "It's just not." I think that might have been him i don't know but um yeah i mean because aaron did then hang out the rest of the time and he brought a friend and the friend was very cool the friend was yeah. do you remember like that you know and and he was sort of helping out and not really oh, yeah. a lot but he was just had, they they made like a weekend of it and he was <laughs> uh he was stoked by what was going on the friend and Aaron was having a good time, even though he got voted out. So it took him not too long to get over the whole situation. He was he was yeah. pretty chill and hired afterwards. I'm, yeah, edit cool. I'm editing episode eight right now, and I saw him in the background. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, he stuck around! Wow, that's awesome!" Yeah, they, they pitched a tent, drank some beers. They were just yeah. like sitting out by their tent, crushing crushing beers and hanging out. They were yeah, they were awesome. Yep. And then Mary. Aaron's buddy does, you know, they would have had that buddy time on Exile had Aaron ah. stayed. Ah. <laughs> he really missed out on some good times with Mary. <laughs> yeah, but Mary, Mary becomes our uh our mayor of exile. Our mm -hmm. our our Reem. Reem, yes. She's our Reem. Yeah. That's a great Reem. <laughs> She's a Reem for sure. <laughs> That all, but, I always think of my one of my top wand offs. You just offended Reem. I don't know if you remember that one from, to the Toy Story theme. I, I do remember. Did uh, you just a friend did me? <laughs> that was a really you good one. All the ones about Reem. Were good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that a, a DJ LaBelle Klein did that one? May, I think so. Kind of hear his voice doing it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Who would, who would you say was the uh, MVP of the episode? Yeah, it's tough. That's tough. I didn't. I didn't have a clear. I think Allison. That's where, That's I, would where go. I was going. Oh, good. Yeah, we agree. Yeah. yeah. I think Allison setting herself up very nicely, mm -hmm. according to these episodes. She's she's in yeah. a good spot. I think Dave also had a good good episode, but you you didn't like. Not as strong, right? He he's not in as good a position i don't it does, at least it doesn't seem that way at this moment and yeah, allison also has the cross tribal things going um right yeah she just has such a genuine smile it's hard not yeah <laughs> so who would be the most fun to watch on real survivor allison Allison, what about Mary out there? Imagine that it. wild card on CBS Survivor. My goodness. That would be fantastic. Dee Dee would be fantastic. Uh, if she could last, I don't think she could. <laughs> poor, poor Dee Dee. <laughs> uh, Topher's really great. I could see him out there. Yeah, Topher, Topher would be up there for me. I think um, I'm trying to just like really go through everyone. Adam would be good he just needs to articulate a little bit more he uh he his brain works a lot faster than you know, way faster just... than his mouth can can go there's there's more coming and we thought andy was mr mcmumbles but um a adam might be the mcmumbles of season four <laughs> i need to get a shirt that says mcmumbles <laughs> Mumbles. i think uh T i think actually tj um yeah tj is uh, he's articulate um I think he has he I think he would be a yeah uh, and I don't I you know I didn't see all like ton of confessionals into it I um I think that he has a good read on what's going on in the game yeah very good read. and 
and articulates again is, is able to articulate that well so i think he would be a good uh narrator on the show and he's he's an interesting guy too um and with that job uh yeah pro poker player pro poker player they don't do well in survivor never but, <laughs> but they make for good tv usually yeah, long was, live jean robert <laughs> Sean, who are the other ones garrett garrett terrible man did not do well very bad but that he was also a mary in a way right <laughs> yeah let's tell um, let's tell everyone who we're voting out <laughs> who uh who else? There, was, oh, there was another uh, there was a there was a female poker player creator name Oh, we don't talk about Anna Kate here, do we? <laughs> oh, that's right. I mean, so this is a this is a terrible Anna Kate story. Oh uh, no, I, I have a story. So I was at a um, sort of like a New York Survivor meetup thing. I think it was like a party hosted by like uh, Andrea Belke, mm -hmm. and I went there. And I, you know, you meet up, meet all the survivors. And at one point, I like did not know, right? Like she was like, "Oh, this is that person who plays Survivor," and I was just like chatting with her. Um, and uh, she like offered to, she's like, yeah, I'll give you, like, if you have like a audition video, I'll give you tips on your audition video. Oh. Did not know. I was like, oh, sure. Yeah. So like I sent you know, on Instagram or something. And then like, got, like saw like, you know, we just disagree on like life and stuff. Uh, yeah. I was like, ah, yeah, maybe not, maybe not the advice I need. Um, maybe, well, you know. I, saw, I met her at that same exact party and I had no idea who she was. Oh. Like she was talking to me I didn't know, like, and I'm a diehard Survivor yeah. fan. I had, even when she told me, I had to Google her. I had <laughs> no idea who she was. She did not make an impact on me. I think, you know, mm -hmm. she has things that people that like certain things see. I didn't see those things. Oh, those things. <laughs> I know what you're trying. I know what things you're talking trying about. Trying to be PG thirteen, you know. <laughs> Are there th there's, and, there's things anyway? Anna, Anna Kate was Anna Kate was on uh, Co Wrong on the Beauty Tribe, and that's all we will say. And no more talk of that. My <laughs> yeah, my, my, my uh, the other thing from that party, Sri Fields came up to me and asked me <gasps> asked me if I was on the show. She's like, what "Were you on the, the show? Were you on Survivor?" And I was like, "No, I wasn't." She's like, "Oh, you should be." And I was like, "That's why you're so what? good, Sri. You made uh -huh. me feel special, and that's what you do to everyone." I know you don't actually think that, <laughs> but I know that you. Oh, what would she get out of telling you that? All right? She's a fan. hoping. Yeah, a she, fan. you're already. She knows a fan. she has. If a you're fan. not already a fan, you're you're not a good person. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But... No, she you knows she wants is like another fans versus favorite season. You to be on the favorite on the fans tribe, and she does an Eric Reichenbach on you, right? <laughs> I love I love Eric Reichenbach. Yes. As do I. Eric Who does this, this is. This you have is his all... art. This is yeah. This is the rules. No rules way. of Survivor from the um, from yeah. why why blank lost, and then yeah. this is just random. I can't. Where's my hand? There we go. This is just random. I have a bunch of ra random uh, Eric Reichenbach and art. Oh, that's awesome. Reichenbach. Yeah. <laughs> he's actually coming. I I uh, DM'd him today about he's like as a, a game that's coming out, and I was trying to see where I could purchase his game. Oh, I don't know. That's pretty he's, cool. he's trying to. He's trying to make. I don't know if he's like actually where he is, and he says he's like thinking about doing crowdfunding for it. But it's like a social deduction like kind of game. Like a board game. Yeah, yeah. So he, he like he 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 like creates like tries to create board. He's like been working on a one big board game, and I think this is like a smaller one that goes along with one like a, a graphic novel that he wrote. That's so cool. Yeah, we commissioned him to do like a an original piece of art for our game. He kind of redid the logo and put everybody's faces in it in his Aaron, Eric Reichenbach way. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. What a cool guy. Yeah, it was commissioned, you know, but he's still, yeah. still, still he a really cool money. guy. Yeah, yeah he got, he got, he got, you know, but it was, it was definitely worth the commission. Um, mm -hmm. It really was. He, he did such a good job and the players were stoked. Yeah, the, play, the players, you know, everyone, everyone who played got a a poster size version and some stickers of that so awesome yeah i'm trying so andy you're gonna come back with us and and uh, do another <laughs> podcast soon i would you know i I would love to we're, we'll see you know we'll every see. day my you know uh liz gets a little bit more pregnant um she's about as pregnant as you can be so Oof. well yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're less than a week from the due date so we'll see oh wow know. oh boy no. less than a week because okay jazzy is scheduled to come on for episode four so if she cancels at the last minute 
I'm calling you still. George is sure. texting you. Yeah, just, yeah text just, just bring your laptop into the hospital. Yeah. We'll be fine. Yes. <laughs> we'll have some fun stuff in the background, right? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> the la- so we don't know, we don't know boy or girl yet. And the last time we did this and still probably top most terrifying moment of my life, one of, one of them of my life was, you know, baby comes out and they hold it up and they say, dad, what do we have? And I'm just looking, right? Like I've been up for a really long time. I'm very stressed out and I'm looking, I'm just like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I know what I'm supposed to be looking for, but I don't really, right? Like, I don't know, like the genitals, like, what I'm really supposed to say. And I'm just like, kind of looking and I just get, I was like, it's a girl. They're like, yeah, it's a girl. Know, but yeah, that moment of like, it felt like, you know, anyone who's ever had st- like for dropped a line when they're on stage and like did not, you know, it feels like it's an infinite amount of time where you're, you know, you're supposed to say something and you have to say something. Yeah. It was, that, that was the, you know, big one of the, so I'm, I'm going back in for that. That's going to happen again, but I go in with more knowledge this time, this time I'll hopefully get it. Right the umbilical again. cord won't confuse you and everything will be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a better idea of what I'm looking for this time, hopefully. <laughs> well, we hope you get to about six of these. So we we want we want our own tribe of Andy's kids. Wow. We want them to have be their own their own LRG tribe in the next oh, step. Man, if if we make it past two, I'll be amazed. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So shall we end this wonderful episode? We covered I, everything. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on again. I, you know, I, I really do love doing this with you and with you too. You're a joy. I wish you could come on every week. I do too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That, that, yeah, that means a lot. I, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah. Um, but I hope we get you a few more times. Yeah. Who, who who else just, you know, is it, is it spoiling to say who else might be coming on? Who else do you? No, not necessarily. I mean, Jazzy from season two will be love with Jazzy. us for episode always, four. I yeah. always wanted to meet Jazzy. She, oh yeah. I yeah, know yeah, Jazzy. Yeah. Oh, she's the best. She's the best. Oof, She'll be yeah. fun. She's, um, yeah. She, she's so good. Yeah. Like her. I mean, I just from the name her. alone. I was rooting her for her so <laughs> yeah. hard that season. Yes. She, yeah. And yeah. And Becky, I was also, you know. <laughs> of course. I'd love to get Kaya on. Kaya would be a lot of fun. I'd like to see her again. Uh, Addison did contact Kaya and Kaya says yes. So we just need to make it happen. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it'll happen, but I hope it does. And then yeah, maybe, Kaya's, maybe will. Kaya's perspective is like an hour by itself. We don't even have to talk. Just go ahead, Kaya. What, what was your experience during that weekend? Oh just go ahead and talk. I can't wait. Will, will, would, be, will would be great. I know Will. Um, oh, yeah. Has, will has thoughts. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And and will yeah will has good strength. like I th- I think will thinks about the game in a very interesting way and mm-hmm. like yeah you yep. in, cur- in a curious way any anyone else anyone I guess you said Matt we were Matt potentially coming on at some point yeah and he had a great excuse for not being able to be here with us today and so yeah. I hope he can join us at some point this season yeah um, Addison will be back to talk more about exile because he was the guy filming all of exile so we'll yeah, have yeah. him back soon nice yeah we didn't see Addison for two days that's how much he did exile right. he was <laughs> he came, he came back with a full beard too he was he was out there forever oh. yeah I love Addison all right I gotta go smoke pot whoa oh. whoa whoa <laughs> edit that out <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us. Legal in the state of New York. (laughs) Bye, everyone. Bye.